Hi everyone, it's Kunihiro. Thank you for coming back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to treat tuna that I buy from a Japanese supermarket and make sushi with it. I will explain many things in today's video, so I hope you would stay with me until the end. Okay, so let's begin. So today I bought two blocks of bigai tuna from a Japanese supermarket. Bigai tuna is served as regular tuna sushi and sashimi at the Japanese restaurants. Blocks of tuna cut into shapes like these are called sack blocks. I think many of you have seen those tuna sack blocks in a Japanese supermarket and wondered which one to buy since there were too many choices. So first I'd like to talk about what kind of tuna sack blocks you should choose and what kind you shouldn't. Tuna sack blocks are roughly divided into two types. Lean red meat and meat with fat content. Lean red meat comes from the center of the tuna and meat with fat content comes from just underneath the skin. If you want to enjoy the true taste of tuna, I would suggest you buy lean red meat like this one. The color of the flesh should be this ruby red. If the color is kind of brownish, it is the sign the fish isn't fresh. So please do not buy it. And the nice thing about this part is that it doesn't have noticeable sinew lines compared to the meat close to the skin. So you don't have to worry about breaking meat when you cut it. And next, I would like you to see this sack block. Can you see the color change? Pinkish red to ruby red. This pinkish portion is fat. The skin side of good big eye tuna meat always has this color change. This part of tuna has a very good balance of fat and lean meat and is very delicious. And the next thing I want you to check is sinew lines. Unlike lean red meat, meat closer to the skin always has more noticeable sinew lines. So it is very important to choose a sack block with less noticeable sinew lines compared to others. So this one is a very good example. Tuna sushi made with a sinewy sack block becomes really chewy. Also it doesn't look good. So please avoid ones with thick sinew lines. So now that you know how to choose good tuna, let's start preparing sushi next. Since I have two sack blocks today, I'd like to show you two different ways of preparing. So I'm going to make soy marinated tuna sushi with this lean red meat. And regular tuna sushi with this fatty portion. Let me begin with regular tuna sushi. First I'm going to salt cure this block of tuna for 20 minutes. With this method, you can remove excess moisture that contains fishiness from tuna and bring out more umami. It also firms up the flesh a little bit, so the texture gets better too. But if you are buying super fresh tuna from a fish company, salt curing is not really necessary. Because those are usually more flavorful and less fishy than ones from a supermarket. Okay, let's start. Uh, first, put tuna on a tray like this and sprinkle salt all over tuna. But please don't sprinkle too much salt because it will make the fish salty. And now, please flip it and sprinkle the same amount of salt on this side too. Then cover the tray with plastic wrap and leave this in the fridge for 20 minutes. And when you do that, please make sure to put something underneath the tray and tilt it like this. That way, excess moisture that comes out of the fish won't get back into the fish again. Ok, 20 minutes have passed. It looks like this now. As you can see, a lot of excess moisture came out of the tuna. 
The next thing you have to do is to wash off the salt. So please prepare some ice water and wash the tuna in the ice water quickly and gently. And once you are done washing, please dry the tuna with a paper towel very well. If you don't do it well, the water gets into the tuna and the flesh will become soggy. Then wrap the tuna with the wax paper. If you don't have it, a paper towel is fine. And wrap it one more time with plastic wrap. And let it rest for 30 minutes in the fridge. Then it will be ready to use. Okay, so that's it. Now let's move on to soy marinated tuna. When you marinate tuna, you have to blend your own soy sauce. That soy sauce is called nikiri soy sauce. So here's what you need to make it. You need 50 milliliters of sake, 100 milliliters of mirin, and 350 milliliters of soy sauce. First, please add mirin and sake into a pot. and put this on fire. Turn on the heat to medium. And when it starts boiling, set it on fire and let the alcohol evaporate. And please wait until the fire goes out naturally. If the flame is too big, you can turn down the heat so that the flame gets smaller. Then when the fire is out, turn off the heat once. And add the soy sauce into the pot. Then turn on the heat to medium again. And give it a stir. Heating soy sauce makes it milder, but boiling it makes it saltier. So please turn off the heat just before it starts boiling. Okay, it's about to boil. So that is it. Turn off the heat. And cool it down quickly with ice water to lock in the flavor. You can use it as soon as it gets cold. Once the soy sauce gets cold, let's cut tuna into sushi slices. So I'm cutting this lean red meat for soy marinated tuna sushi. The most important thing when cutting tuna into sushi slices is to cut against the sinew lines. But as I mentioned earlier, this part of tuna usually doesn't have noticeable sinew lines. So you don't have to worry about the orientation of tuna when you cut it. First of all, please place tuna close to the edge of the cutting board. That way your right hand doesn't hit against the cutting board when you cut it. And always start cutting from the left side. But before slicing, I want you to know how to adjust the angle of your knife. It's very simple. So when you want to create a longer slice, you have to move your knife this way. And when you want to create a shorter slice, you have to move your knife this way. Longer, shorter, longer, shorter. And when you want to create a wider slice, you have to tilt your knife this way. And when you want to create a narrower slice, you have to stand up the blade this way. So it's wider, narrower, wider, narrower. 
Okay, please keep it in your mind. Now, let me start cutting. The first piece always becomes a triangular shape like this. This part is used for the inside of roll or gunkamaki. Let me cut the second slice. So from this second slice, you can use for sushi. Please cut it with one motion. Start with the heel of the knife and finish with the tip of the knife. And before cutting each time, please adjust the angle of your knife to cut it into even size slices. This time, I want you to watch how I move the blade. I'm cutting diagonally, and when I come to the end, I stand the blade up and cut through. By standing the blade up at the end, you can create a beautiful edge like this. And this edge stands out when you make sushi with this slice. So this side becomes the front side of your sushi. And same as the first piece, please use this end piece for roll or gunkanmaki. And next, please put all the slices in a container. And then, simply pour the nikiri soy sauce over them. You don't need to use a lot of it. But please make sure that all the slices are covered with the nikiri soy sauce. Then please marinate them for 10 minutes. To now we will release the fishiness and absorb the nice flavor of nikiri soy sauce. And you can keep the rest of the nikiri soy sauce in a bottle and keep it in the fridge for a few months. So you can use this soy sauce not only as a marinade, but also as a dipping sauce for sushi and sashimi. Okay, 10 minutes have passed. So please take all the slices out of soy sauce and dry them with paper towels very well. and put all the slices front side up on a plate so you don't confuse the front side with the back side when you make sushi. Now, let me cut the other side block. So when you cut the sack block that has visible sinew lines like this one, you always have to cut against the sinew lines. But before you cut it, you have to make sure those sinew lines are leaning toward your side. To do so, please look at the side of the sack block. It's kind of hard to see, but all the sinew lines are slightly leaning toward my side. That means this sack block is placed in the correct orientation and I can start cutting. But if the sinew lines are leaning toward the opposite direction from me, that means this sack block is placed in the wrong orientation. And if I cut it, I get a bigger chance of breaking meat. Now, let me start cutting. First, cut off the edge just a little bit. And save for roll. Use your knife big, from the heel of the knife to the tip of the knife, and at the end, stand the blade up. Adjust the angle of your knife and cut. Please try to create a beautiful edge like this.
put all the slices on a plate and let's start making sushi next. Wet your hands and make a small rice bowl. And grab a slice of tuna. Take a little bit of wasabi and put it in the center of the tuna. And put the rice on the fish and make an air hole with your left hand thumb. And then with these fingers, please close the air hole. Then with right hand index finger, press it down a little bit. And flip. Then put the index and middle fingers on the sushi. And press the side of the right hand middle finger with four fingers of the left hand. And rotate, press the side, rotate, press the side one more time. That's it. This time I'm going to make it at normal speed. Wasabi air hole. Close air hole, press it down, flip. One, two, three, four. Hi. Once you remember all the moves, try to make sushi quickly with a light touch. That way, you can make the rice firm on the outside and flaky on the inside. And with end pieces, I'm going to make some gunkamaki. So let me cut them into smaller pieces. Previously, I made a video of how to make gunkamaki, so if you wanna know how to make it, please check that out. I explain in more detail in that video. Okay, so wet your hands and make a rice bowl. The amount of the rice should be a little bit more than nigiri sushi. And shape the rice in the same way as when you make nigiri sushi. and put some wasabi on top of the rice if you want. Then wrap seaweed around the rice tightly. And press the top of the rice a little bit to make the seaweed wrap even tighter. And please put tuna on top of gunkanmaki. And decorate all the sushi beautifully on a plate. At the end, brush a little more nikiri soy sauce on soy marinated tuna sushi and make them shiny. So please don't dip them in soy sauce when you eat them. Please eat them as is. Okay, that's it. A plate of tuna sushi is ready. Please enjoy the regular one and gunkanmaki with nikiri soy sauce. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. So if you did, 
please hit the like button and leave a comment below. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.